Not sure if many of you know, but we do have a virtual tier within the Design Coven virtual pro member tier, which includes three virtual meetings a month where we set intentions. We do group coaching. So bring all your questions. We answer those questions and you get to learn from other people going through the same struggles as you. We also do a business practice meeting. So we'll have somebody on to share a business practice that we can all benefit from. And then we also do a product training. So getting a sustainable, eco-friendly line to come on and share who they are so that we can be supported with other like-minded businesses. And if you're not quite ready for pro, you can always join our free community where you will connect with other like-minded holistic interior designers. You don't have to be an interior designer if you are kind of just dabbling or you're aspiring or you're looking into this field. We invite everybody from all journeys and you don't, again, have to be a designer. You don't have to have a degree. We're just a beautiful community of like-minded people looking to create healing spaces, not just for ourselves, but for our clients and future clients. Come join us at designcoven.com forward slash join. You're listening to the Holistic Interior Design Podcast. This is a podcast that guides you as a new or inspiring independent interior designer navigating your entrepreneurial path. Here with my over 20 years experience, I will share my holistic approach to design with intention and ancient practices, including feng shui, all incorporating mind, body, and spirit into my design projects. You will also learn from seasoned interior designers as they give strategies and insight of how they built their businesses and continue to work in the field. Together, we will discover supportive trade partners, new ideas, creatives, and inspiring artists from around the world. I'm your host, Rachel Lorraine Crawford. Hello, hello. Today, we are focusing on the south area of the home. Uh, We had Mithras on Tuesday, which was beautiful candle talk. So I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to follow up as we discuss the direction of the south. So before we start, I'm going to go ahead and light our candle, light our beautiful Mithras beeswax candle, connecting with that fire element, the element of passion and creation, desire. I'm going to go ahead and ring our bell getting us into our present moment. And I'm going to pull our card. I am pulling from Inkwitch Tarot again. Since we did that on Tuesday, I thought I would keep going with that beautiful theme. Uh, The cards are divine, watercolor. The palette is grounding with these beautiful tans and browns, but then there's also these really um, peaceful blues, hints of blues and blacks, which is really, really neat and gorgeous. So I'm gonna pull one of these cards. I always pull my cards right side up. It's just the way I like to, to read tarot. So our card today is the chariot. So I just love this card. Eric, the creator has a car and then he's got two cats. Um, of course, the black cat and the white cat from the traditional right away tarot deck with the two cats at the side. Um, they're at the front, or I should say the feces. And so the two cats are here uh, playing with both black and white. And the chariot always comes in when we're pushing forward. We're pushing, pushing, pushing. Uh, just moving forward, not letting anything get into our way. We're becoming unstoppable and we're just making stuff happen. So make it happen, push forward, be just like the chariot, be unstoppable. Love that card. Um, And then the tea I'm drinking is from Paru and it's Chiang Rai Silver Tips. And I have to read the description to you um, that Amy wrote because it's spot on. So Silver Tips White Tea is originally from Funding and is prized because it's made of only delicate spring buds handpicked just before the leaves unfurl. 
This rare batch from Chiang Rai presents a soft straw and brown sugar aroma. It also de delivers a complex tasting profile wavering from pine to honey and back. It is so beautiful. It's this delicate, delicate tea. It's really pretty. It's, I feel like I say everything's pretty, but it is really gorgeous. Um, it's silvery. The, the leaves are, are thin and skinny and she's right. It's like, it's just before they start to open up and the aroma is light. It's just a really delicate, beautiful tea. And I'm just so lucky to be able to, um, enjoy this. This was in the subscription box for April with Paru. Alrighty. So getting into the direction of Sao. So in Feng Shui and other, um, lineages, the South is connected to fire. So this is one direction and element that I feel like is really connected in, in a lot of different lineages as the same element. Uh, when we were talking about the North before in Feng Shui, you know, it's connected to water and other lineages. It, it's, you know, the North is connected to earth, but South here is, is connected to fire. I feel like in so many traditions and in Feng Shui, the South is fame and reputation. It's how you're seen in the world. It's how you shine your light. This is a perfect space to write any affirmations connected to the way you're being seen, to your reputation, to what you want to present to the world. This in business is a beautiful direction to put your logo, your business logo. Uh, whenever I'm designing a commercial space, I look for that South wall and see if there's a way that we can make it work so that it really shines a beautiful light on your logo and who you are and how you want to represent yourself. There are um, different correspondences to this direction. The shape is the triangle. So if you think of a triangle, it looks like a flame. Of course, the element is fire and fire represents love and passion, creation, but the shadow side of it all, you know, would be anger, temper, destruction, and the color correspondences if you think of fire are going to be reds oranges and yellows and you can incorporate fire into your home without the actual element through these colors through these shapes the other correspondence of course is going to be candles so if you want to bring in candle magic into your space the crystals are going to be carnelian carnelian just has a beautiful energy about it where it's very energetic it's almost like caffeine then we have citrine and fire agate which are other crystals that i associate with this direction in feng shui the element of fire it is also connected to the number nine which is an accelerator or a magnifier so in your home you're going to want to add elements of fire um, when you want to create something, you know, but only small bits, you don't want a whole room of red. It's overwhelming. And then you just want to be aware of what's surrounding the space. So don't add any red. If there's a ton of clutter and you haven't, you know, cleared things out, you want to add fire kind of at the tail end when everything's situated, everything's great. Then we bring in the candles or we bring in, you know, little pots of red or rests and orange. So you just want to be very mindful of where you're putting the fire. Cause again, it's going to accelerate current energies that are in the space. Fire also represents the, um, three horoscope signs, the zodiac signs of Aries, which we know is the initiator. Uh, Leo, and you can think of Leo as, you know, fame and, and the spotlight and then Sagittarius. And then in the Northern hemisphere, of course, we are coming into the ceremony of Beltane, which is the halfway point between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. So Beltane is a celebration of life, a celebration of manifestation, fertility, growth, expansion, and that big sexual energy that's in the Northern hemisphere right now going into May 1st. And uh, of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, you're on the other side of the wheel. So they're going to be going into Samhain, going into the portal of, you know, of death. You know, the, the veils are still thin between both of these worlds. But here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're going to be going into a portal of life, portal of expansion and opposite that, um, you know, down below. And some beautiful rituals that I like to use incorporating fire is 
you know, sex magic, that's going to be using that sexual energy to manifest, to create something coming forward. I love using candles, creating candle magic, setting intentions with candles. And if you're in the San Diego area around um, May 1st, on May 1st, I am doing a new moon Beltane ceremony at 12 Senses Retreat, which is in Encinitas, California that evening we are going to be connecting with a beautiful sound bath and then we're going to be doing candle magic so I will be hand rolling beeswax candles we are going to be infusing those candles with herbs and crystals and oils that all correspond to this fire uh, manifestation energy and we're going to be setting intentions of course for the new moon it's going to be really magical and then we're going to be putting that out there and, and lighting those candles together as a group magnifying our intentions i'd love to know if you have any rituals or things that you like to do around this time of year how you're feeling we've just started to dive into taurus season and taurus is is not a, a fire element but it is a sign of manifestation. They know how to create and they can make something beautiful from nothing. So I encourage you all to tap into Taurus energy by connecting with all the senses. And then of course with fire, you know, the light is back. The sun is here. We're going into summer. This is a time of celebration, connection with the light and expansion. You've been listening to the Holistic Interior Design Podcast. If it's one that you have been enjoying, please share with anyone else that you think can benefit from this knowledge and leave us a five-star review that helps us get seen and found by other new and aspiring interior designers. And if you're looking for mentorship, I invite you to join our club here at the Design Coven. It's a bridge between school and real life interior design we get in much deeper there we have virtual and in-person events so everyone is welcome you don't need to have a design degree to be part of it just an interest in holistic interior design i also want to thank our editor marcy ferry and lastly ken seth thibodeau who is our music composer. Until next time, be well and we will see each other soon.